Hello, and welcome to MITx MicroMasters Program in Statistics and Data Science uh, Pathways webinar. Uh, today is October the 2nd, and my name is Susanna Kivarkova. I am Program Manager for MicroMasters in Statistics and Data Science, and today we will have guests from various pathway schools sharing about their programs. Before we proceed, I want to give you some um, overview um, housekeeping details. Basically, you um, have an option to submit questions. You will see the Q&A button on the uh, bottom of your screen, and you can submit any questions related to program and the pathway schools. You can just type in your questions uh, directly into the box, and we will get to them as soon as we can. If you have any technical difficulties today, please use the question mark widget and that will prompt immediate attention. And also, if you have any questions that go unanswered, please feel free to send an email to micromasters-support at mit.edu, which you can see at the bottom of the screen on the current slide. Um, so today, I want to briefly introduce the MicroMasters program in statistics and data science, which you are, most of you are already familiar with. It's a professional academic credential for online learners from all over the world. And you would have to pass a set of four MIT-level rigor of courses in one virtually proctored set of exams, and then you can earn the MicroMasters credential from MITx. Here in the slide, we have a quick overview of the program um, at a glance. And uh, what it is, is that the program itself has been developed by IDSS faculty. And IDSS stands for Institute for Data Systems and Society. There are four courses, as you know, and a capstone exam, which, comprise, which the program is comprised of. And each course is equivalent in length to one MIT semester, which is between 14 and 16 weeks um, in length. Sorry, I think we, we have um, a wrong slide showing at this point. Let me just go back to uh, the slide that I am referencing. OK, I think we're back. Um, the, um, and hope you're, you're seeing the screen. So another thing that I wanted to point out that that commitment of time for each of the courses is between 10 to 14 hours per week, which is, again, similar to what we expect from on-campus students. And uh, verified learners, the fee for the program is 300 per course. And you are also have an option of purchasing all of the courses at once as a bundle which provides a 10% savings at 13.50 in total. Um, and here is a list of all the courses. And we want to point out that we refer to these courses as the four pillar stones of data science. So we have the probability, data analysis, fundamentals of statistics, and machine learning. And you will notice the, an elective, a new course, uh, which is noted as um, an elective um, that will be coming soon. And it will be launching in the spring of 2021. And it will be satisfying the data analysis category. Now, I want to briefly mention the capstone since it's running in October. Um, we typically refer to it as a capstone exam, one capstone exam, but it is actually comprised of four two-hour virtually practiced exams. And each exam focuses on the, the course material, individual course materials, but it also tests your knowledge across all of the courses. Um, so this slide um, sort of puts everything in perspective in terms of how does it work. Um, basically, the, you first have to complete and pass the set of four courses and earn the certificate. Then you will need to take the practice exam and earn the certificate in that. And then having earned the credential, you have the opportunities to take the knowledge and skills in your studies and, your, and apply it to your career 
um, or to your studies in the field of data science. So if you're interested in pursuing further graduate degree, there are many pathway school programs that would take the MicroMasters credential that you have earned and embed it into their programs. And this is the focus of today's session. Um, here in the next slide, what you're seeing are the logos of all of the pathway schools that are currently affiliated with MicroMasters and Statistics and Data Science program. And I will now point out the specific ones which are being represented in today's session. So we have the Covenant University from Nigeria, and you will see that logo in the top row in the middle. Then we have the Northwestern University in the bottom right corner. And we also have the University of San Francisco. And um, today we are happy to have representatives from all of the schools who will be giving you a deep dive introduction to their programs. So I will now um, introduce you to the participants and pass on the floor to them to give you an overview. Um, from Covenant University in Nigeria, we have Ada Sonia Peter, who is the Director of International Office and Linkages. We have Humphrey Adebayo, professor, who is a professor and dean of postgraduate school. We have Oni Adaronki, senior lecturer in the Department of Computer Science. From Northwestern University, we have Thomas Miller, who is a faculty director of Master of Science program. And from University of San Francisco, we have Peter Lawrenson, associate professor and academic director of Applied Economic Programs, and Marta Lazzarini, the program manager. And now I will pass the floor to Ada Sonia Peter from Covenant University in Nigeria. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. And I, I'll thank you indeed again. We can hear you. Thank Anna. you for taking the time to listen and to understand who we are at Covenant and how the MIT uh, MicroMasters works. Um, Covenant University, allow me to tell you a little bit about Covenant University. Um, Covenant University is one of Africa's uh, leading higher education um, institutions. In, in, in the 2020 Times Higher Education ranking, the university was rated number four on the continent and, of course, top 500 globally. You know, training at Covenant University intensely... ...about the spirit, soul... embraces the full building responsibility, diligence, and sacrifice. So the university has also, you know, led shifts in, in the educational landscape of the continent. Uh, two remarkable instances include, uh, first, shifts away from teaching about entrepreneurship to actually cultivating entrepreneurs. And second, really, is a shift away from the scholarly focus on theories to instead life applicable and relevant skill sets. As an institution, really, we're committed to offering our learners 21st century industry relevant knowledge skill sets. A good instance you know, of this commitment is the most recent partnership with Kazera, a global MOOC platform that falls into Gartner's Magic Quadrant. The partnership affords all Covenant University students access to the 4,800 plus you know, industry relevant offerings in Kazera. So beyond the academic rigor at Covenant, we improve our students' learning experience through this sort of, you know, partnership, you know, called um, Kazera for Campus. So today, 98% of Covenant University graduates are either employed or they are employers of labor. And this happens within just two short years of graduating 
from Covenant University. More so, the worth of our graduate startups fall in, in the million dollar worth quadrant. Uh, a global uh, venture capitalist once acknowledged this saying that we found out that the graduates of Covenant University founded 50% of the companies we invested in. So that's really, you know, a quick summary of, of the university. That said, here's a little bit about the computer science program and specialization at Covenant, because it's within this computer science program that Covenant offers MIT MicroMasters um, SDS certificate holders credit. Our computer science program offers you the opportunity to fortify your professional and intellectual capabilities to beat the ever-changing challenges of ICT, uh, whether in, the, in practice or in teaching or in research. The specializations include software engineering, artificial intelligence, bioinformatics, health informatics, and data science. Also, the computer science program, if I may, um, let me hint you a bit about the skill set you're sure to find in our graduates. Our graduates write solid, reliable, efficient codes. Also, they've got good awareness and practical knowledge of AI-specific paradigms and algorithms. Also, we talk about skills for developing virtual reality apps for mobile, console, or PCs. I'm sure it will begin saying um, that they, 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 they are very skilled with C++ programming and debug, uh, debugging skills. Um, they are experts also in, in good al algorithms and data structures, really. You know, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Twitter, McKinsey, and the lots are some of the many employers of our graduates. But the next question is, um, what, what's the admission criteria, really? What do you need to come to Covenant University? Admission is open to candidates with a good first degree in computer science, um, with a minimum of a second class lower division from Covenant University or any other university recognized by the Senate, you know, here at Covenant University. In addition to, the, to these, to these um, qualifications that I just hinted, uh, candidates must also go through our postgraduate screening exercise to qualify for admission. At the end of my presentation, I will share the link where you'll see more details about the application process. The application is really easy, and there are about 100 to 50 percent tuition scholarships available for outstanding eligible international students. If you're wondering about the duration, uh, the master's degree you know, in computer science is a full-time program, and it lasts for a minimum of about four semesters. The next question is, so how does, how does what I do, uh, how, how, how does it all fit into the MIT, you know, pathway course that I, I'm interested in? So specifically, Covenant University agrees to grant academic credits to each MicroMaster learner who successfully completes the statistics and data um, uh, science MicroMaster program offered by MIT. Um, you might ask how much credit we offer accordingly learners who earn this MicroMasters certificate um, and is also accepted into the Covenant University Master's Program in Computer Science. Uh, you'll receive three academic credits for the MicroMasters, um, for, for your MicroMasters certificate. And if you're, if you're really interested, um, you can visit this website, you know, to see all of the details about applying. I, I believe the applications are now open for the new session, which starts in November, and you, you feel free to apply. We're also happy to, to take questions from you if you do have questions. The Dean of the Postgraduate School, Professor Humphrey Adebayo, is here, and a senior faculty from that department, um, Dr. Ronke Oni, is also here to answer specific questions. Thank you so much. Over to you, Susanna. Thank you, Ada. Uh, thank you for a very informative uh, presentation. We do have questions uh, starting to pop in. And uh, one question we have right now is how much does that uh, master's program cost? Professor Humphrey, are you there or do I pick up? on that question. We may be experiencing connectivity issues. Oh. I okay. have 
right, so, uh, so let me attend to that question real quick. So the, the MicroMasters program at Covenant um, for the first year is worth about, um, if I put that in dollars, it's about $4,000. And then the second year, about the same amount. Great, thank you. Um, and when is the application deadline? Yes. Pardon me, I, I didn't get that question. Oh, the, the next question was about the application deadline. If you can uh, give more information on that, please. Right. So, so the application process. If you if you hit the 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 the, the link that I'm just sharing right now, all of the details are there. But simply, it starts with going on our on our platform, and then clicking the apply button, providing all the all of the all of the documents that are required on that platform. Um, the, the board will review those those um, those application documents, and you'll get you know real time responses from us, knowing the next steps of what to do. But the whole process uh, really takes between um, the first week of submission to about the fourth the fourth week for for decision making. Wonderful. Um, and is there a language requirement for your master's program? Absolutely. So the, the, the requirement really is um, English. <laughs> um, the language requirement is English, but you really don't need to, except if you're coming from a French speaking or, you know, a Spanish speaking country, then you might need to show us a proof of um, um, English, you know, language that you're capable of, you know, learning with English, either with a TOEFL or an IELTS certificate, or perhaps you know, if you've schooled all, all of your life in English, that also, you know, satisfies our requirements. Great. Um, another question, how will MITx help us in getting an admission for a master's at CU? Right, so, um, the MIT MicroMasters, you know, helps you at Covenant University because first, um, it gives you the grounding that you require to to succeed in our program. And then secondly, also, um, the fact that we waive three credits away for you means you spend perhaps lesser time to graduate from the program. And of course, um, I imagine that the program also, because because of course, the, the, the situation here at Covenant, you know, also captures some of some of, I mean, when I talk about the situation, I'm referring now to to the learning situation, the learning content, what you have to learn here at Covenant. Completing an MIT um, X program suggests to us that you've got the capacity to, to do well here at Covenant. Great. Um, and can someone with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering apply for the master's program? Um, someone with a, with a, a background in engineering. I imagine so degree. that you, you should be able to apply to the program and um, the, the board at the, at the Dean of Postgraduate um, Studies will, um, uh, the board at the School of Postgraduate Studies will decide, will decide on your qualifications depending on what your first degree is, what your transcript is reading, what's, what you're bringing on, on board. And of course, by paying attention that you've completed an, an MIT MicroMasters uh, program. Might, might also make a case why we should, you know, admit you. Great, thank you for answering all the questions, Ada. I think those are all the questions we have received. Um, and we thank you for the presentation. At this point, I will pass on the floor to Thomas Miller, who is the Faculty Director of Masters of Science Program at Northwestern University. Thank you, Susanna. Our program at Northwestern got its beginning uh, 10 years ago. Uh, I joined the program uh, in the original design phases of it uh, in the summer of 2011. And we offered our first courses in the program in the fall of 2011. Uh, we are 
as most data science programs are. Uh, we are an eclectic program. We cover the three major contributing languages, you could say, um, business and statistics and information technology. Uh, we also have been from the beginning in 2011, uh, we have been an online program. Uh, the course lengths are 10 weeks, so we're on a term by term or quarter system rather than a semester system. So it's 10 weeks and then approximately you know, two or three weeks between terms. And it's flexible. Uh, there is no requirement to be in class on any particular day or time. So you can be fully employed uh, and complete our program. And most of our students are, in fact, fully employed. 90% uh, are employed full time and pursue this uh, Master of Science in Data Science uh, as an additional degree uh, to prepare themselves for advancement within their own firms or uh, to seek other, fir other positions. Um, we have, because most of the students are employed full time, they take one or two courses a term. And like you've experienced uh, with the discussion of the uh, MicroMasters program, a course should occupy and should be expected to occupy 10 to say 15 hours a week. And that will of course depend upon your previous background. So if you're coming to our program from a technical background, engineering, computer science, statistics, or math, then the courses might take, you know, on the lower side, 10 hours a week. But if you're coming into the program from, say, the humanities or social sciences, a, a, a program, a, a, a discipline that doesn't involve as much programming and math, then the courses may take more along the lines of 15 hours. We are open to all majors, okay? The last term, there was a student in dance. We've had plenty of students coming to us from English and from the humanities. Uh, this is not uh, a requirement to be in computer science or engineering or statistics or math uh, because our program is geared to prepare students for that. Now, coming from the MicroMasters program, you already have some of the background. Uh, so uh, in our curriculum, uh, we have typically 12 courses in all, and six courses are regarded as core. But because you're coming from the MicroMasters program, you've satisfied three of those six core courses. You've got the ba basics in mathematics, in statistics, and also machine learning. So you're no longer required to take those core courses. You've essentially waived out of those core. That leaves nine courses to complete a master's degree, master of science in data science. Within that degree, you can be a generalist and not indicate a specialization or you can designate one of four specializations, analytics and modeling, which is more along the lines of statistics, analytics and management, which is more along the lines of business, data engineering, that's the computer side or the IT side, where you're talking about implementing systems, or AI, okay, a specialized technology within, you could think of it as analytics and modeling, but dealing with, um, challenging problems in language and vision. Uh, these specializations, which I'll explain in more detail in a few minutes, uh, are part of the program. And when you graduate, you get a diploma that not only indicates state of science, but also indicates the specialization that you've selected. Analytics and modeling, that's statistics. We, in our original a degree program, which was called Predictive Analytics in 2011, before data science was really a recognized discipline, uh, we did essentially analytics and modeling. 
And you can see here, there are two core courses in this specialization. One dealing with supervised learning methods where you're dealing with uh, explanatory variables and identified responses, labeled responses, and building predictive models. They might be regression or they might be classification models. Unsupervised learning methods is another wide area where we're looking at not having clearly identified explanatory and response variables, but we're trying to understand the domain, for cl perhaps classifying variables or classifying respondents into groups, market segmentation, for example, or looking at the domain and trying to understand the dimensions, the underlying dimensions of the domain. If you were working with a text analytics or natural language processing task, for example, you might be looking for underlying topics across a whole set of documents. Unsupervised learning methods are very important. And then, of course, we have a number of, of, of courses to select as electives within this specialization. Uh, although you are free to take courses across our program, and we have 40 courses to select from, so you can tailor the, the curriculum to your own needs. Uh, so that's analytics and modeling. Uh, analytics management is focused more on the business side. So here we're talking about the language of business. Some people think of accounting as being the language of business. So we want to ensure that all students with this specialization understand the financial statements and how to interpret them, and the difference between an, an, an asset and an equity, for example. Uh, this is the accounting and finance for analytics managers. Uh, there's also the, the project management and business leadership and communications uh, areas. And then we flesh that out, you know, finish up the program with other alternatives, data visualization for communication skills, data governance, ethics, and law, very important area right now, concerns about security, concerns about privacy. Uh, these are addressed in, in that course. Uh, data engineering is where we're talking about implementing systems. So you're a data scientist, you're determining a model, say, but that model has to get put into practice. So you've built a recommendation engine, but now you need to put it in practice. You know, make sure that the users can use it. So when they are shopping on an online site, they get the recommended products that make sense, and they get them in real time or near real time. So data engineering is the aspect of you know, it's the it's side of data science where you talk about implementing systems and making decisions, of course, about the, the nature of those systems. And finally, but not least, is artificial intelligence, where we're looking at neural networks and deep learning and models that are more com complicated, many parameters, many more parameters than traditional linear models, for example, but models that have been proven very effective in language and vision tasks. The machine translation, for example, that we're seeing today coming out of Google, okay, that's a deep learning solution. Lots of data are needed to build those kinds of models and sophisticated methods are needed to carry them out, implement the models. So that's the artificial intelligence specialization. Um, we uh, accept uh, official transcripts. And uh, if you're not an English language speaker, as that's already been discussed, you need to provide evidence, uh, either that you've completed a, a program where English was the primary language or a score on an appropriate test that would show your, your language skills. Uh, we do have a rolling admissions uh, program where we have, because we have four terms, we have four periods of admission, as you see uh, on this slide. So that's an overview. I will open it up for any questions that you might have. Susanna. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Very informative. Um, I am looking for the questions. So there is a question already. What is the tuition cost for the MicroMasters learners? Well, the tuition is, is something that uh, we don't sell. Okay, we don't advertise or promote our tuition. We are Northwestern, uh, and you would be charged the tuition that other students uh, pay uh, for the, the master's degree. Um, Northwestern is ranked nine right now in the United States. It's a premier institution. Uh, so if you're talking about nine courses, uh, the total uh, bill, um, hopefully you find some, some way of paying that. A lot of students have employers that pay 
uh, tuition by partial uh, tuition reimbursement. Uh, the total bill would be around $40,000. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, another question is, can I apply for your master's even though I haven't finished the MITx MicroMasters in statistics and data science? That's a, that's a good question. You should anticipate finishing uh, the MicroMasters and you should also anticipate passing the exam, I believe with a score of 80% uh, or more. Um, so uh, although you might be able to apply, you wouldn't be actually formally admitted until you provided that kind of evidence. But we do have students right now coming right out of undergraduate programs that haven't yet received their bachelor's degrees, and we do a provisional admission of those students. Wonderful. Um, can, can one apply to the program with a psychology degree? Absolutely. <laughs> As I mentioned, you, you can have a degree in dance or music, humanities, history. We are not uh, discriminating on, on basis of undergraduate major, nor do we require the GRE or GMAT. Uh, we, we look at your transcript. If you're a, a solid student, certainly coming out of the MicroMasters program, we would expect you to have, to have the skills to, to do mathematics uh, and, and computer work. Uh, you would be okay with our, with our program. Great. Um, and again, a question um, referencing um, financial aid. What types of financial aid are offered? And the second part of that question is, what criteria are used for choosing recipients? I, I don't get, personally, I don't get involved in the financial aid side, but you should contact an admissions representative. Uh, I believe I had the numbers. Um, on one of the slides, yes, here we go, the last slide. I'll just leave this up for a moment. Uh, contact the admissions of representatives and they will walk you through that. You know, every case is unique. Great. Um, and here's another uh, question. Can you say a little bit about uh, PhD program in data science or statistics and does it work the same way? Would MicroMasters credits apply or would the master's count towards a doctorate in some way? Well, you're thinking ahead, certainly, uh, in, in asking that kind of question. Uh, our particular program, with, which is housed in the School of Professional Studies, does not itself offer uh, a doctoral degree or PhD. Uh, but there are other programs within Northwestern uh, where you could pursue a, a doctorate. Um, this is something in planning ahead that you should be thinking of. You know, what is that doctoral major? You know, is it a business like management science? Is it a computer science degree? Is it a specialized degree, for example, in AI within computer science? Uh, you need to find a department that offers doctoral degrees and identify how your program prepares you for that. Now our program, we, we've had a lot of students in our program that look at business and management science areas, operations research as their next path, thinking in terms of getting a doctorate. Uh, we've also had some that are looking at, at uh, the computer science area. Uh, really depends upon your own background and interest, but you have to find a discipline, an academic discipline that offers a relevant degree and it may not be called data science. You know, data science is fairly new. It's an eclectic dis discipline, it's an emerging discipline, and not all schools have uh, PhD programs identified with the, the name data science. Thank you, thank you for that uh, response. Sure. Um, another question, I think it's uh, going back to the language requirement. Does it count to be graduated from a university whose teaching language is English, or would we still be required to take the TOEFL? I believe if you have a bachelor's degree from an, undergra from an under yeah, undergraduate institution where English was the primary language, I believe you're good to go. But again, for those details, to make sure, <laughs> I would contact the admissions advisor and, and that person would walk you through the process. Wonderful. Um, and uh, is it possible to get TA ship or RA ship for the online master's program? Was that a, a fellowship that you're asking about? Or support? I is that what... 
it, that's that's the opportunity yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. We we do not ourselves manage uh, fellowships, um, but many of our students have their employers uh, support them. Uh, so as I said, you know, about ninety percent of our students are fully employed. Uh, so their employers support them by providing partial or full tuition uh, reimbursement. Uh, for the courses they take. Most of them have a set, you know, there's usually a, a set limit of number of courses that a, an employer will support, maybe three per year. So you have three terms and then take a term off. Uh, and many employers have a, a limit, you know, in terms of the dollars that they support uh, in, in tuition reimbursement. So there you, you'd want to work with your employer and, and see what the story is. Great. Um... Thank you so much, Tomas, for this wonderful um, overview. And I think for answering all the questions, um, th those are all the questions we have at the moment. And okay. therefore, I think uh, I will pass the floor on to the representatives from the University of San Francisco. And I believe we have uh, Peter Lawrenson presenting next. Hello, Peter. We cannot hear you at the moment. I think we're having some technical difficulties. Uh, okay, uh, now is it? Okay, sorry, the yeah, controls are different on this setting. Um, uh, okay, so um, so yeah, so uh, uh, great to um, have a chance to speak to you all. So my name is Peter Lawrence, and I'm an associate professor at the University of San Francisco in the economics department. Um, the um, uh, and the head of the the masters of science uh, in uh, applied economics. Um, the uh, University of San Francisco, as you can read, was established in 1855 in San Francisco by the Jesuit fathers. Um, like uh, our uh, partners in the Jesuit system, Georgetown and Boston College, those uh, values broadly permeate um, our system, but there's no religious requirement uh, for the faculty or the students. And we have a great deal of, of ethnic and religious diversity uh, with students all around the world uh, participating. Um, the economics department uh, itself um, it is composed of both full-time faculty like myself uh, who are active researchers. Um, and, and I think an important thing which I think is particularly valuable about our program is that uh, it is a program offered by the department um, that is you know, integral to the university. It's not something uh, kind of off to the side um, run by, by a separate group. Uh, so this, you would be within the economics department of the university. Um, and uh, in addition to our full-time faculty uh, who bring, you know, the academic rigor uh, to, um, to the, um, the program, we also have adjunct faculty who uh, we're, we're fortunate being based in San Francisco to have um, a vast number, honestly, of economics PhDs who are currently working uh, in the tech sector who um, are really just out of their own love for what they do, uh, come and teach a class for us, um, which gives students the opportunity to uh, really see, you know, the the latest, uh, you know, these academic tools being applied in the latest and most contemporary settings by people who um, are, uh, you know, working at, you know, companies like uh, Stripe and Facebook, um, who have PhDs from from Harvard, Caltech, and so forth, uh, to teach about, you know, how they take that that PhD level training. Um, and toolkit and apply it in ways that uh, the tech sector finds tremendously valuable. Um, 
so what is applied economics? Actually, I think we have a nice uh, group of, of presentations today, which I think uh, kind of illustrates the um, you know different directions that you can go with uh, with this amazing SDS Micro Masters program. Um, you know, we have um, you know more of the uh, traditional computer science um, degrees. Then we have data science, and then we have economics. So let me explain what we are, because we're also not a standard economics program. Um, it's uh, we're a new program. Uh, we just uh, brought in our first group of students this past year, uh, and we designed the program really to take advantage of our location in San Francisco and a lot of the new things that economists have been doing, kind of out in the world. Um, you know, at this point, uh, Amazon has over 200 PhD economists. Um, uh, Facebook, many other companies have uh, found them to be kind of an integral part of their data science team because of a different perspective that they bring. So, economists um, are, of course, you know, very versed in statistical methodology, um, and you know, coming from our program, we also make sure that they have a solid foundation in programming, computer science, working with data as a as a full, um, you know specialized data scientist would, um, but also they understand where their data comes from, right? So you wouldn't want, say, a statistician looking at your medical data and just saying, well, I can do statistics so I can tell you how to cure, you know, your disease uh, just because I saw the data. You need someone who actually understands the system that they're dealing with. So you wouldn't, someone wouldn't want a statistician without medical experience working on your, your medicine. You also, uh, you know, companies have found that you really, if you're dealing with economic data, which any business data is really economic data, uh, it can be very valuable to have an economist working on that because they know not just what the correlations and patterns are in the data, but like what's happening with it. Um, so they're very good at uh, understanding these systems, disentangling cor causation from correlation, something that's just an emerging um, area within data science, but not uh, a core strength of that field. Um, also understanding incentives and market structure. Um, you know, it's not just like do we do we put up this button and let's A/B test it and see what happens, um, or let's use machine learning and find out you know whether we have more people who like this performer who like this advertisement. Um, but understanding like why why are they doing these things? So for that reason, there have been a lot of um, economics uh, economists hired. Um, and you know, as I mentioned, we have some uh, teaching in our program. We've also uh, been able to recruit a great um, group of people from. Uh, again, you know, it's very convenient that they all uh, live nearby. Um, you know, the chief economist from Glassdoor, from Intel, head of data science from Dropbox, uh, chief economist from Indeed, uh, senior economist from Google, um, someone from Airbnb, from House, uh, from Walmart, from Lyft. So um, a whole range of top companies that. Uh, have very intensive data science and economics needs. Uh, we have these people who have helped us figure out how to structure a curriculum at the master's level that gets you to the place where you where you need to be to be valuable to them um, in the very near term. Um, so I think I covered the, the main things here. So we start, we focus from the start. Unlike other economics programs, we have both, uh, we start with data skills and programming very early on, uh, as well as um, kind of the, the core economics. Um, look at things like, uh, but teaching also things like platform design, pricing, uh, consumer behavior, and auctions. Um, and so, as I mentioned, so contrasted, you know, a traditional economics master's degree, what your parents probably think of when they think of economics is, you know, macroeconomics and take lots of courses where you make supply and demand diagrams intersect. And we think that's really important for understanding the data, but we're going to get you into the data and the tools for analyzing the data from very early on. The program is a two-year program. Uh, it's in person, um, 36 units in total. Um, I won't go through each of the elements of it. You can also take it part time for three years. Um, obviously, we're operating remotely now, but we're planning to, you know, go back to in person as soon as that uh, becomes feasible. You know, especially with our location in San Francisco, uh, the opportunity to take those skills and then be able to go out and meet with, you know, people working at the startups that are just a few blocks from our uh, campus, people working at, um, you know, the as well as the the, the major conglomerates, um, Facebook and Twitter and everyone else who's who's so nearby. Um, is really a crucial, um, and that also creates opportunities for students. You know, once they have that that core skill set to do uh, summer internships or part time work uh, in the context of their education, uh, both to earn some money and again to get that that practical experience uh, very quickly. Um, 
sorry, it seems to be flipping through the slides without me. Is someone else controlling the slides by accident? Um, let me check that's, um, if it's anyone from our team, that shouldn't be the case. Okay, it seems to have stopped, so uh, sorry, I'll continue. Um, okay, so it's uh, two years, as I mentioned. Um, so you start with your, your core uh, material, mathematics, microeconomics, um, analytics and computation, um, then, uh, then move into econometrics, uh, machine learning, you become el eligible to work as a TA. Um, there was a question um, about, uh, in one of the previous presentations, about TA and RA opportunities. That is something we can offer. Uh, it's a great way to, re uh, by working, working as a teaching assistant or a research assistant, it's a great way to work part-time uh, on campus, um, you know, reinforce the skills you have, uh, and also um, get, uh, get a little bit more money to uh, help deal with the, with the cost of living here. Um, then in the summer, uh, students generally take a summer job or internship uh, and then continue with more advanced co um, classes in their second year. And then wrap up um, in the final semester with a capstone project, which hopefully you've been working on before that time. Um, and the idea there is you really want to have a portfolio that when you're applying for jobs, you can easily use uh, for, you know, uh, whatever you need, right? You can send out as many resumes as you want, but what you really want is someone to see your LinkedIn profile and say, you know, or have you reach out to them, they check your LinkedIn profile, they see, oh, they have a GitHub up, they look at the code you've written, and they'll be able to tell within a few seconds that you basically know what you're doing or not, right? So having, the, uh, having that kind of public profile with some kind of piece of of work that you've done on your own is really crucial. Um, and that's something we heard again and again from uh, top people at Netflix, Netflix, Facebook, and others who, who've um, who I've talked to about like how to structure this program. Um, so capstone projects, um, you know, how much is a customer worth? Um, real estate market. Also, you know, some people work on more policy-oriented topics, like looking at the sentencing lengths in private prisons uh, or development-oriented projects like child mortality across communities in India. Um, and really, you can work on anything, you know, and again, this is something I've heard over and over. It's not that you need to, like, have uh, a business analytics project. I mean, that's great, but if you've done, you know, a really cool project um, that, again, showcases your skills and you've written up, you have great visualizations, um, and that shows you have the communication skills as well, then it doesn't matter whether, you know, what it's on. Um, that they, they know that they can adapt those, uh, those skills to what, they want, what they're looking for. Um, I'll just briefly mention, we also do have uh, an international and development economics master's program um, that is uh, very well established, been around for, I think, around 15 years now, um, that also has a, a very intensive data focus. Um, but combined with that international perspective. And I think the, you know, this may be of interest to some students if you're interested in this area. Um, also, it's just good to know that, you know, all of our faculty are uh, not just sort of focused on San Francisco and the tech economy here, but also thinking from a global perspective um, in the Jesuit tradition and thinking not just about, you know, how to make money, but also how to change the world in positive ways. Uh, and your classmates will share that perspective. Um, so how does this uh, connect with the, M the uh, SDS MicroMasters? Um, you can earn up to eight credits towards the degree. So basically that will save you about $10,000 in tuition um, relative to what you'd pay without that. Um, as, and uh, a student asked whether you have to finish the, the program. If you want to get the credits, you need to finish the program because um, you have to have that proctored exam, which I believe is only offered at the end currently. Um, but uh, but you're certainly welcome to you know apply as soon as you're ready. Um, another another great thing about this program and why you know when I heard about it we were so excited to to partner with with MIT is that you know this gives you a chance you know if you're some from some place that you know I may not have heard of yet you know uh, around the world the lesser known university but you have strong skills um, then you can, this is a chance for you to shine, right? You take these courses, you get good grades, and that's really gonna matter when we think about you in terms of admissions and in terms of scholarships. Um, so uh, in terms of scholarships also, we are able to uh, offer, um, we can offer scholarships to many students, but not all. 
And these will be partial scholarships, so there's no complete free rides. Really, that's pretty much true for almost any master's program. Um, and uh, so we're in the same boat. We'd love to, you know, there's so many amazing students. We'd love to be able to educate you all, but unfortunately, we do have to, you know, ultimately pay the rent and pay the uh, pay the professors and, and take care of everything else. Um, this just uh, discusses which specific courses uh, these count for in our curriculum. I think that's uh, not as as crucial. If you've already been, uh, sorry, this is slightly outdated. So uh, it says students with strong summer DDP grades. So if you have, uh, if you've already completed the SDS program and have strong grades uh, and would like to join us uh, in January, um, time is getting tight, but we would be willing to consider that. Otherwise, you would be starting in fall of 2021. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's all I wanted to say now. So I'll give you guys a chance to ask some questions. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, and we do have questions coming in. Um, the first one is, do you provide internship opportunities during the master's program and any career advisory services for graduates? Um, yeah, so uh, we don't have like guaranteed internships. You have to apply for, uh, you know, you have to find your own companies, but you know, companies more and more are getting to know our students. Um, and obviously I've been reaching out to a lot of different people um, out there. So they know when your application comes in that it'll be worth paying attention to. Um, and uh, in terms of career advisory, so, you know, I'm always here for advice that we also, that's, you know, one of the sort of responsibilities of our advisory board. Um, so our advisory board members, actually this summer we had, um, uh, panel with uh, the chief economist from Intel, um, a senior data science economist from Walmart who previously worked at Sunrun and Facebook, um, and uh, and the economist from um, uh, I think it was from Glassdoor. Sorry, I forget who all, who all was involved, but they all um, spoke. Uh, they each spoke in this um, in a sort of webinar format. Obviously, given you know the times we're in, um, uh, about like their particular career paths. Um, what um, uh, you know, their own recommendations for how to train yourself, how you, how to market yourself, what kinds of opportunities are out there, uh, and they're also uh, potentially available for individual students to reach out to for for follow up. Um, we also had Celine Swin, who's um, at Dropbox. She did a separate one um, specifically oriented towards uh, our East Asian students to help them, you know, understand how she, you know, also having come from China originally, how she kind of navigated uh, the American corporate world and uh, and succeeded uh, in that context, which is, you know, obviously unfamiliar for for people for that background and can take some adaptation. Um, so let me just scroll over the other questions. So as I mentioned, there are teaching assistantships. Uh, adjunct positions, uh, we do not have, our adjunct professors all have at least a master's degree and uh, generally speaking a PhD. So, uh, so you as students would not have that opportunity, but you would have opportunities to, uh, to take on teaching assistants, assistantships. And again, that's a great way to make some money, um, very convenient obviously because you're on campus already uh, and reinforces what you're learning. Um, so the question is, how much would the total cost be for a MicroMasters learner? Uh, so tuition gets uh, adjusted slightly every year, and they haven't announced what next fall's tuition would be. Um, but we're talking pretty much uh, after you've taken the um, uh, MicroMasters courses, you'd be looking at about $40,000. Um, and then there's whatever scholarship we're able to allocate towards you. Um, so that's a lot. Living in San Francisco is very expensive. You know, I'm not going to lie to you about that. Um, we find, you know, there's a lot of people who really want to be here, and and you know, they they make it happen. Um, for those of you who do find it, you know, especially challenging, you know, if you're coming from you know a less privileged background or from uh, a country um, that uh, where you know that's well, that's a real that's a lot of money for anyone. But you know, for some countries, that's a lot, a lot of money. And so, you know, if you're in that situation, we really do, as part of our global mission, uh, feel it's very important to do our best to uh, bring in students from from really all around the world. So I do encourage you to apply, um, even if you would not be able to to fund that full amount. Um, and we will do our best for you. Um, Scrolling through the other questions. Um, uh, 
uh, yeah, for applying for the program, um, I think it's the same as a lot of other places. Um, there, uh, you know, the GRE is optional. Um, oh, and uh, we, you know, as with the, the Northwestern folks, um, we'll take anyone from any background, you know, as long as you're a strong student. And I would add to that, as long as you're not scared of math, or at least if you're scared of math, I'm scared of math. Math is hard, right? There's math is, is distinctly hard, I would say, in a way that sometimes just writing an essay is not. But as long as you're willing to like deal with that fear and work hard to, to learn math, um, then uh, we can work with that. Some of our students, and, and we adapt the program to people's different uh, levels of ability um, accordingly. Uh, sorry, I guess we're short on time, so I'll, I'll uh, try to wrap up. So uh, there is a IELTS or TOEFL requirement if you're not um, from a primarily English-speaking institution uh, in, um, in I think, Australia, US, the UK, and a few other places. Um, we also are allowing uh, Duolingo tests just because of the difficulty uh, people have had getting to traditional testing centers. I believe that's we've made that an option this year. Um, and finally, uh, I think our program does uh, qualify you for OPT after graduation. Uh, and again, that's you know a nice feature of, of doing an in-person program. So uh, you can work on it as an uh, intern during your program on CPT basis, and then uh, you'll get the STEM OPT um, uh, authorization after that, which means you can work uh, in a full-time job for a full three years after graduation. And you know that three years is really important because that gives you long enough to to really prove to a company that it's worth going through the you know ever increasing hassles of trying to apply for an H one B visa for you if you do want to stay, or you know if not, it gives you that again three years is long enough to really ground yourself and say okay I had an amazing experience working at a company uh, in California in the tech sector, and then even if you end up going back to your home country, you'll you know have that sort of credential and that experience with you uh, regardless. Great. Okay, so I think my time's uh, up, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, uh, see the floor. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing your applications. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, yeah, I think at this point we are running over time, but I wanted to open up the floor to our presenters for any last-minute thoughts or comments that you want to share. Feel free to do this now uh, before we end the session. Well, this is Tom. A very interesting diversity here, uh, and uh, the very uh, the, the San Francisco is especially interesting to me. A lot of our students do come from economics, and I think there's a lot to be said for the the similarity between and the overlap between data science and economics. Um, the uh, prediction markets uh, might be interesting to watch. I would think, uh, Peter, uh, over the the next uh, few days, um, uh, take a look at the. Uh, a, 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 a Twitter feed that I've been generating on a model uh, for predicting what happens in the election. It's on a, a Twitter called Virtual Tout. Uh, so you might be interested in the economics behind that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Thomas. Uh, it's um, very timely. <laughs> uh, I think. Um, I, at this point, I also want to take this opportunity to thank all the viewers and quickly share a slide with you if it's possible. Um, I, we're, we're trying to get um, to the slide right now on the screen. Just wanted to share some of the relevant um, links for the MicroMasters program. Um, we also have, um, we want to point out the learner videos which you can access on the MicroMasters program side. Um, I think the, the, the slide is up right now, uh, but this is a representation of our, some of our credential holders speaking directly um, and sharing their experiences with the program, which is great to hear. Um, and we have representation in the program for, from all 195 countries in the world, uh, which I, I, I'm, I'm proud to admit. And um, at this point, I, again, I want to thank all the presenters and the viewers I think um, the session has been very informative and provides for more options to our learners. And uh, we are very excited about that. Um, and uh, please visit the site, uh, the Pathway webinars um, will be all of the previous sessions in, including today's session. It has been video recorded and will be shared on the MicroMasters 
uh, pathway schools um, link, which you're seeing on the on the page as well. And again, if you have any questions, you can email us at idss-sds-mm at mit.edu. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing some of you in the forums. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.